In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create this search bar and filters pane in your Power BI reports. I'm going to show you how you can create this familiar looking search bar along with some useful components like the clear filters button, applied filters text, and all of this using just the out of the box visuals in Power BI Desktop. I'll also show you how you can copy paste this solution to your own reports. So stick around to the end of the video for that. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's jump in. So last year, the Power BI team released a bunch of new visuals, one of them being the text slicer, which sort of works like a search bar. It lets you free type your texts to search your data. And while this visual is useful, I wanted to have a different type of UI slicer, similar to a search bar that you would find in most websites. And this is what I came up with. It's a text slicer combined with other elements in Power BI. So five components in total, all using native visuals. We have the text slicer in the middle here, which is what we use for searching or filtering our data. We have a background here, which uh, gives the illusion of the search bar. So this is just a button. We have the clear all button, which is simply just a button visual in Power BI. We have the applied filters text here at the bottom, which uh, we're using a card visual for. And then a background, which is housing the title and the divider here. Now that you know all of the components that build up this filters pane, let's go through step by step on how you would build this from scratch. Let's first start by adding a text box into our report. Let's go to the title here and turn it on. We'll add a title here, apply filters. If we scroll down a little bit, let's go to divider and add that divider line. I'll just add a different color here, solid, leave it as it is. And then we'll add the spacing here, 10 pixels, just to give us a little bit more headspace for our header. We'll make it bold. And just to keep it consistent, I am gonna add a padding at the top of the title as well, and the padding on the left. So we'll do 10. We'll also add a visual border here, which I will make it white. And we'll just add it for the rounded corners if you're interested in that. So we'll just put this to eight pixels rounded. So that just makes it consistent with the bar chart that I've added here. The next thing that we want to add is the search box, specifically the background that will serve as kind of the illusion that we have a search bar instead of a text slicer. So to do that, we're gonna add a empty button here. And this button is not actually going to do anything. We're just using it so that we can add an icon for it. So we'll go to the button style here. We'll go to border. First of all, we'll just disable that. And then next we'll go to icon. We'll choose custom and we'll hit browse. So I already have an SVG icon of the kind of magnifying glass that I want to use. So I'm just going to use that here as my icon. And then we want to add a little bit more padding on the left hand side just to give it a bit more space. We'll resize it and we'll also add the fill here. Just make it a bit of a gray color. So here under button style, we'll just change the rounded corners to five pixels, something like this. So the next thing is to add the actual text slicer visual on top of this background. From here on, we want to make sure to remove all of the text styling and formatting options in the text slicer because we already have the background that we're going to use for that to give that illusion. So from our table, let's drag in the column or the fields that we want to use in our text slicer. We'll convert this into a text slicer like this and let's go through some of these styling options. So first of all, let's remove the background and let's remove all of the paddings here. Let's remove the title because we don't need that. Under input text, we'll just add an input text here, search by category and we'll change the color to gray. The dismiss button, we can put this into six pixels. So this is the X icon next to 
your values that you've entered. We'll leave the spacing to two pixels. On the applied text padding, we also want to remove all of that. And we'll probably modify this in a second just to see how this would look like in the search bar. The text applied uh, background color will just put this transparency to 90%. And then for the apply button, uh, which is the arrow here, we can simply just remove that. So either set the icon size to zero or just make it transparent. We can also remove the padding here in case we need that extra space to the right. For the input text box, uh, let's put everything on the padding to zero except the, the one above. It's just to give us a bit of space up there. Uh, let's remove the background because we want to use the background on the search box. And let's just place it in here now so we can see how that would look like. We'll remove the border and the focus accent bar. So this is the bar that comes up at the bottom if there are some categories applied to it. And that's it. So you now have a functional search bar already that you should be able to use. Now, I just want to modify this a little bit um, by just making the search bar a little bit bigger. Drag this here as well. Just size it so that it fits inside this, uh, this bar that we have. And let's look at the padding because I don't like that there is a kind of blank area there. So now when we type values, as you can see, it gets applied into our, uh, our page here. So you can see that it's searched for beverages and we can use the, the dismiss button to unselect it. Now, currently this text slicer only allows you to put one value at a time, which you can customize by changing the slicer settings option here to accept multiple values. So this means that if you have, let's say beverages here, you can add another filter here to say condiments and it will filter or apply those two filters. Another thing that you can add here to make it a little bit easier for your users is a clear all button which is simply just that it just clears all of the slicers that is applied to your page. To do that, we're going to go to the buttons here. And again, we'll uh, create a blank button. Just drag it here. We we'll look at some of the settings here uh, for the button. On the button style, we can remove or disable the icon and borders because we're actually interested in adding just the text right here and we're just going to have a clear all here change the font color let's let's choose blue just resize it a little bit and we want to change also the button style to show that it's being hovered over and it can be selected um, so we change the state to on hover we want the underline to happen the last thing is to go to action enable that and under type, select clear all slicers. And that basically clears the slicer selections in the page. So now if we do control click here from Power BI Desktop, as you can see that removes the slicer from our search bar. Lastly, a finishing touch that you can add to this is the applied filters text at the bottom, which shows your users what filters are being applied to the report. Now the logic to the applied filters text can be a little bit daunting, but there is a shortcut that you can use using DAX Studio. So let me show you how you can do it. So if you have DAX Studio with your Power BI desktop, you need to go to external tools. DAX Studio. This will open up your model. From the left hand side, you want to look for the table that contains the field that you are using for the filters for the search bar. So in this case, we only have one table here, the orders table. Now right click and define dump measure. And then from here, we're just going to simply copy this and close DAX Studio. We're going to put this into a measure. Now I've already created the measure here that does it, but I'm going to delete everything and I'm just going to start from scratch as if I'm creating a new slicer. So I'm going to put applied filters here and then I'm going to paste the script that we copied. We want to remove the first few lines of text here. Just start from where the variable is being declared and let's look for the fields that we, we want to show the filters on. So in this case, we're using the category name from the orders table. So this if statement is the only one that we need. Everything else we can delete. So we're just going to delete everything else. 
Let's also modify this a little bit because I don't want to show this will be what will be shown in the text. So I'm just going to update this to show um, uh, category like this. And the next thing is to simply put this measure into a text box or in this case, we're going to use a card and the new card visual just because it's a lot easier for us to copy and paste this into new reports without you know, necessarily breaking it. So we are going to put this here at the bottom here. And then under the data well, I'm just going to drag in the applied filters, which as you can see, it will show already the applied filters. Let's just customize it a bit so that we can just see the value in the card itself. So under size and style, we want to remove the background. Also remove the paddings here because we don't really need it. Under callout values, we want to remove the label so that we can only see the values. Under show blank as it's a good place to put uh, or to give indication that there are no filters selected. So I'm just going to say no filters selected here. And then the text color will just make it a little bit faint like this. And then let's just scroll down a little bit here and let's look for the padding to just let's just make it narrow. Just resize this so that there's a bit of space. And let's also remove the border and the background because we don't really need that. And uh, there we go. So that should be working now as expected. So if we just type search here, as you can see, it will show you what filters are being applied. And if we add another one, uh, let's say seafood. Let's do some final touch up in this solution. Some of the things that I actually forgot to do. So on the text applied text filters here, we want to do a text wrap just because if you have multiple values selected here and it will overflow, we need to make sure that it's just wrapped into whatever the size is of this, uh, of this box. We want to disable header icons on some of these elements that we don't want the function to work on. So for this applied uh, filters card, for example, um, under properties, just disable that just so that um, when your user hovers over it, the, um, the ellipsis options don't show up on the top right. Uh, same thing with the background button here, which is something that we're not really using. Um, it's already turned off and also for the card since we don't really need to do that. Under the clear all button, um, you can also customize the tooltip that shows up. So let's say clears all filters applied on page. So if you click that, that should all be working now as expected. Now, if you're a little bit lazy and you just want to use this solution for your Power BI reports, I want to show you how you can copy and paste this and customize it to use your own data. So from the first page here, I already have the, uh, the solution grouped up uh, together. So all you need to do is just select it, copy and go to your own report. So this is a new report here with a completely different set of data. So this is just tickets data with a chart here showing the total number of tickets by different statuses. If we paste that, uh, that solution that we have, and that's okay because some of the visuals rely on data that doesn't exist in this report anymore. So let's change where those visuals are pointing at. So under this selection pane here, let's expand the group. Let's start with the search slicer here where it's searching based on the category name. Now it doesn't exist anymore. So we're just going to use a different field here, uh, ticket status instead. So just drag it in. As you can see, now it will be able to search. Now you might want to customize the, um, the search by category, the applied text here. So under format, you want to go to the input text and change the placeholder here. So search by status. The next thing is the applied filters text. Now it's completely optional and it should, the whole thing should work. Um, even if you just disable it, if you don't want the filters applied to show, but if you want this part to work, we follow the same steps as before. We go to external tools, DAX studio, look for the table that has the field that we want to filter. 
right click define filter dump measure copy it creates the new measure applied filters there might be a lot here that's okay we'll delete the first few lines here to start with the variable declaration here and then let's look for the if statements where we have the status so because that's the status that is the field that we are using to um, to, to apply a filter on. So it's this if statement. So we can simply just copy it. Oh, I'm just gonna cut it and delete everything else here because we don't need it. And we'll change this text here just to show status. Uh, we can change this to applied filters like this. And then lastly, under applied filters texts, the actual visual, we'll change the data here to use the applied filters measure that we've just created. So now this filter should now work exactly as we've looked at before, except now it's filtering by status. So if we search for open, it applies the filter to only show open tickets. Closed, that should work as well. That's it. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.